So can Villa sink the Swans and leapfrog the Welsh outfit in the standings? That's the idea, with just one point separating the two clubs, neither yet safe. In this week's pre-match show, we have comment from keeper Brad Guzan, last week's man of the match against Southampton, Mark Albrighton, and 19-year-old forward Callum Robinson, fresh from his first appearance in the top flight. We enjoy some of our finest goals scored in over two decades of Premier League football, including a stunner from Staunton, a rip snorter from Wright, and a classic from Cahill. As usual, Steve Frogger is here to analyse the opposition. Froggy, great to see you. Who are Swansea's main men then? Well, the three we'll be looking at today will be uh, Jonathan de Guzman, Wayne Routledge, who Villa fans would know, even though he, he didn't really set the place alight during his time here, and also Wilfred Boney. He's their main man, the, the goal scorer, the one in great form right now, and the one we certainly have to stop at the weekend. Yeah, he's a real unit, and he's banging the goals in. Yes, he's a, he's a big lad, massive uh, physical presence up front for him, and our defenders will they certainly have their hands full. I mean, he's your archetypal, you know, leader of the line, you play one man up front, he's got all the attributes to do it and uh, he's got better and better and, and, and particularly at the Liberty Stadium, he's become a real big fan's favourite this year, taken over the mantle from Michu who's been missing for most part of the season. It promises to be an exciting if perhaps tension filled weekend doesn't it in the Premier yeah. League, you look at some of the other fixtures, Norwich and Manchester United, West Brom, West Ham, Fulham and Hull, Sunderland and Cardiff but I think the key is for Villa not to worry about that it's still very much in their hands with, with four games to go. I think it's inevitable that you're going to be looking over your shoulder wanting to know the results from around the country because it could dictate how you go about your own. I mean, if results are going our way, a draw would be a fabulous result. But if things are going wrong, it might have to be that we, we, we might need to go and win the game, bearing in mind the two games we've got at the, uh, mm. at the end of the season. So results around the country will dictate, I think, what goes on from our point of view. But they say, there'll be really, there's some really nervy games this weekend. Swans are in a similar position to us. We could yeah. you know, leapfrog Swans, blah, blah. So it's one of those situations where neither team will want to lose that game. But as the home side, they'll be the ones expected to make the run in and to win the game. But as we all know, away from home and on the counter-attack, we have always been a threat this season. Absolutely. Now, on the face of it, you might think that a draw would be a good outcome, but you can't play for one, can you? I'm, I'm sure they'll go with a positive mindset, think that they can pick up all the points. I, I believe ultimately, I think if, if both managers could shake hands and take <laughs> a point now, I'm absolutely certain that that would be the case. It doesn't work like that though. It doesn't work that way, no. And it, it will be, it'll be interesting because Swansea, like ourselves, have been hugely inconsistent all season. You know, just when you think they're getting a good run, then they slip up against teams that they should be beating, very much like ourselves this year. So there are lots of parallels between us, yeah. and obviously in terms of main men strikers, Wilfred Boney, Christian Benteke, um, they've not been probably at their greatest defensively, as at times we haven't been this season. Mm. So it's going to be fascinating watching the battles and, and, and different ideologies, because Swansea love to keep the ball, but do they keep the ball for, for keeping the ball's sake? I believe so, too much, whereas, you know, possession stats we've not been in the best this year but going forward we, we particularly away from home we cause teams lots of problems so it will be a real clash it and will. let's hope we come out on top <laughs> at the end of it with the three points let's hope so it was a real watershed moment I think last season at the Liberty Stadium when Villa got the two all draw because they'd just been on the end of a, a few beatings so they had to get the, the ship back in order they did and, and that's why it was so important last weekend to get the point against Southampton because it stopped the rot and now they can go again it's all about, it's, all that matters now is that we retain premiership safety. That's what this club's built on. It, it's, it's the future that, we'll, that the club will go from. And obviously, we we'll mentioned Callum Robinson, who we talk about yeah. the future of a football club. He's one of those kids coming through the system now that all the fans love to see. But we've just got to get over the line, Jack. It, and at this stage, <laughs> I, I don't care how we do it, yeah. so long as we, you know, we are still a Premier League side come the start of next season. You love the drama, don't you? It ages all of us, Jack. <laughs> yeah, well, a few grey hairs <laughs> creeping in since last week. What's going on? Anyway, member of the class of 82, Ken McNaught, is with me for commentary from the Liberty Stadium. Be sure to join us. 